finding a porno in her head. It's that kind of coming of age moment that shape you as a person. I don't know if I can reminisce about much at 23 years old, but I like to reminisce about the 90s, the good old days. <laughs> but it was just the PlayStation 2 and stuff like that. <laughs> Remember when you get your first taste of independence, when word had spread in your school that somebody's mum and dad were going away for the weekend? and that the guy or girl were having a party. They never knew they were having a party. <laughs> Perhaps having is the wrong choice of what they were getting a party. <laughs> I don't mean the kind of high school parties that you see in American movies. <laughs> hey, hey, do you guys, do you guys know Chad Hogan? Of course, man, everybody knows Chad Hogan, man. <laughs> Chad Hogan's mom and dad are going away to Long Island for the weekend, man. There's a party at Chad Hogan's mom and dad's. Yeah, woo! Spring break, yeah! <laughs> Chad Hogan's parties are awesome, man, woo! Then it shows you Chad Hogan's party. Chad Hogan's booked a band for his living room. <laughs> Great party, Chad. Woo, yeah. Let's go get some dip and chip. Woo. <laughs> Everybody's nodding at the music with these plastic cups of beer that nobody knows who brought them. Just, whoa, yeah, woo. It's on the kind of parties we had. We never had that kind of parties. We never had spring break. We had the Easter holidays. <laughs> and I was growing up, it was called an empty. An empty. <laughs> it derives from, we've got an empty house. We've got an empty. <laughs> the house is empty. It's an empty. But you never had spring break. <laughs> Chad Hogan or band at an empty. An empty was a far more tense affair. <laughs> Somebody's furious cousin would disrupt the ambience by announcing that he'd purchased 12 cans, <laughs> drank two, <laughs> gave one away, but there's only seven left. Turn that down. We've got a can fee. Fucking turn that down. <laughs> Somebody else in the corner just trying on people's jackets. <laughs> Think this one suits me? <laughs> Not even asking, does it fit me? Does it suit me? Well, the guy's a petty criminal, but you need to look your best, don't you? The same guy that's leaving the house at the end of the night holding a microwave. <laughs> oh, I think you'll find I brought this with me. <laughs> and I do not care for the accusation. <laughs> I mean, why would I steal a microwave? <laughs> <laughs> a 35-year-old guy that nobody knew in the corner. <laughs> smoking dope and blown into a Labrador's face. <laughs> <laughs> An intelligent dog as well, and it's sitting there frazzled. <laughs> An empty. Good times in an empty. I seen a headline about a mental party. It was obviously a tragic event, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> a headline, it said, women drugged, beaten, tied up, and left for dead at neighbor's party. <laughs> and so I'm sure that can no longer be referred to as a party. <laughs> I 
I have been in attendance at some pretty wild gaffes. <laughs> but when a woman has been drugged, beaten, tied up, I, I better get a taxi. <laughs> That's the cutest dog dashing at nibbles. <laughs> well, a lot of violent crime, that's been in the news quite a lot. A lot of violent crime, knife crime, gun crime, stuff. Well, I don't really know the solution is there's calls for, for tougher sentences. I think we need more consistent sentences. You know, for example, the crime attempted murder that carries a six or seven year jail sentence, whereas murder carries a life sentence. Now, why should that be different? You still tried it. <laughs> Attempted, you try to kill somebody. You weren't very good at it. <laughs> it was by no means your forte. And I don't think you should get a lesser sentence. In my opinion, you should get double the sentence for making an arse of it. <laughs> when you get police officers to travel around schools to give talks to kids about knife crime, at the end of the talks, they give the kid a sticker that says, Dennis the Menace, or something, <laughs> something like that. Dennis the Menace says no to knives. I don't mean to be cynical here, but if you were a Dennis the Menace says no to knife sticker at school, there's a good chance you'd get stabbed. <laughs> I think a start would be to close the shops that sell violent weapons. Now you get these sports shops that sell crossbows to alcoholics, not these places. <laughs> In sports shops that sell 3,000 baseball bats every year, but have never sold a baseball. <laughs> or the Easter House Red Sox. I've not a game in a while, but we're still... <laughs> we're still selling them equipment. They must have a pretty hectic pre-season schedule booked. <laughs> I was in one of these places doing a bit of research and the only security measure if you want to buy something that could be construed as a violent weapon is you need to fill in a form leaving your name and address so if anything happens you can be easily traced for questioning. Now that's, that's the theory. What's self-respect in nutcase? <laughs> Buying a weapon with a view to committing a heinous felony would leave their real name and address. Now, I picture some police investigation team going through the book. Say, excuse me. Shop owner. <laughs> Says here you sold a samurai sword to Belt and Elney. <laughs> From 24 Sesame Street. <laughs> and some new guy cop had maybe sent him on a wild goose chase somewhere. Sesame Street not showing up on the sat nav. <laughs> Sliding down the window for directions. Well, excuse me. Uh, excuse me, mate. Sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can you uh, tell me? <laughs> how to get? How to get to Sesame? That's a fucking wind up, isn't it? I used to watch a programme called Get Your Own Back. <laughs> Big show in the 90s. I'll explain the premise of the show to the more mature audience members. It was hosted by a guy called Dave Benson Phillips. <laughs> Big Dave, as you can see, a fanny magnet. Right, Dave Benson Phillips. <laughs> <laughs>